Hello everyone. I am Women Grandmaster Nisha Mohata and I welcome all of you to the third episode of Masala Chai and Chess with Nisha. Let's drink a cup of positivity. So what are we going to see today? In the last episode, I spoke of Grandmaster Nigel Short, the British chess legend who needs no introduction to the chess world. So today I will show to you a brilliant game played by him and this is one of the many brilliant games that he has played. So this was 2004 and Nigel was white against a very strong Chinese grandmaster Ye Xianchuan. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing the name correctly. Ye is the first Chinese player to cross the 2600 rating mark and this he did in the year 2000. He has won the Chinese Chess Championship 7 times. This game was played in a very strong closed tournament in Taiwan and this victory helped Nigel in winning the tournament. So let's get started with the game. E4 was played. C5, the Sicilian defense. Knight F3, E6. D4, C into D4, knight into D4. Knight c6, knight c3, queen c7, bishop e2, a6, castles, knight f6, king h1, white wants to play f4. This is all theory. Bishop e7, f4, d6, knight into c6, b into c6. Queen d3. White wants to shift the queen to the king side in future. Castles. B3. Bishop b7. This was the first new move played in the game. Till now, it was all played earlier. In an earlier game, c5 had been played, but bishop b7 is the first new move. Bishop b2 was played, c5. So black is opening the diagonal of the b7 bishop. And he's putting some pressure on the e4 pawn. Rook a e1, rook a e8. And now all pieces are developed. And it is clear that white is going to attack on the king side. But the question is how to go about the attack, how to proceed from here. Can you guess Nigel's next move? It's a very interesting idea what he played. So Nigel played queen h3. He is leaving the e4 pawn unguarded. This is a brilliant move. and the reason i think this is so is because he is leaving the e4 pawn unguarded and it is not clear how he will proceed after that so you know in my own games i find it very difficult to make such sacrifices when the variations are not very concrete when the variations how to proceed from there is not concrete so i find it very difficult and for me such moves are the ones which i which strikes my mind when i see it and it's not easy to foresee here i mean how to you know proceed so let's see knight into e4 was played bishop d3 but one thing is that due to the pawn sacrifice now all white pieces are towards the black king they're aiming towards the black king black played knight f6 here white played a very nice move rook e3 the rook lift begins this move has a brilliant tactical idea can you think of it so now let's give a pass as black to understand what short was looking forward to so let's try say rook d8 So black is telling pass. Knight d five. 
the brilliant idea rookie eight was not played we are trying to understand what was white's idea behind rookie three now after knight d5 the knight is attacking the queen so black must capture the knight bishop d5 bishop into f6 and now white is threatening a mate with queen at seven now how will black defend against this mate let's try at six can you spot white's next move here it's brilliant actually Nigel's idea was queen into h6, g into h6, and a beautiful mate, rook g3. So h6 does not work. Now suppose black tries g6 instead. Now can you guess white's move? It's another brilliancy. Queen into h7. Wow. King into h7, rook h3, king g8, rook h8 mate. Beautiful short combination. Okay, so after rook e3, black, the Chinese grandmaster, uh, of course, saw white's idea and played g6. And now short played a nice move knight d1 the knight is clearing the way for the b2 bishop and the knight itself might go either from f2 or from e3 to g4 and these you know regrouping moves are not at all easy to make. I find them very difficult. So yeah, knight d1 was played. Black played c4. So now what black wants to do is black wants to put the queen to c5 and then play queen h5 and exchange the queens. So Nigel played b into c4 and he does not want to move his bishop from the b1 h7 diagonal. Black played queen c5 and as we now know, black wants to play queen h5. And here Nigel played a very nice move. It's a prophylaxis against queen h5 and it's, it's also a very good attacking move, f5. He's putting pressure on this e6 pawn. So black played e5 and black closes the diagonal a1 h8 so this diagonal is now closed uh, one thing i want to mention is that e into f5 is not really working here because white takes rook e7 and after rook e7 bishop into f6 is coming and white has a fantastic position so e5 was played and nigel played Rook g3. He is piling up on g6. So black played bishop e4. In a way he is defending the g6 pawn by removing the piece which is attacking it. Knight e3. The last piece of white comes to the attack. Look how a strong player brings every piece to the attack. Bishop into d3 was played. C into d3. King h8. And now, this is another very interesting position. First thing we need to understand is that f into g6 is not really working here. Because after f into g6, this was not played. Rook into g6. Black can equalize either with knight h5 or with knight e4. For example, knight h5, uh, white cannot take on h5 
uh, because uh, this knight is also hanging. I mean, white can take, but uh, this knight is hanging. So, coming back to this position, Nigel realized that fg6 is not good. And he played a very nice move, a move which I like very much. He played bishop c1. So what uh, I think he would have thought was on b2, the bishop was hitting against the wall. This pawn on e5 was actually strong and the bishop could not do anything on the a1 h8 diagonal. So what he did was he just brought the bishop to c1 and now gave it a different role, a different square to look forward to. And I think that square is, you know, I mean this diagonal and the h6 square basically. And this bishop is going to be the real hero soon. And such an undeveloping move like bishop c1 and earlier we saw knight d1 is not easy to make. The bishop was developed on b2 and Nigel plays bishop c1. It's like, you know, you bring it back to the original position. I find these moves hard to make. Okay, so in this position, rook g8 was played. f into g6, f into g6. And now comes a fantastic move. A simple but very strong move. Knight d5. Now this knight on f6 was a good defender for black. So white wants to remove the defender. As simple. Black took knight into d5. And now, can you guess white's next move? It's a brilliant one. Nigel played queen h7. What a shot. The strong Chinese grandmaster had to resign here because after king h7, rook h3, king g7, bishop h6 check, king h8, bishop f8, bishop h4, rook into h4, it's a mate. So this is the final position of the game. Queen at seven. It feels so awesome to finish a game with a queen sacrifice. We see it in tactics book and it is wonderful to get it in one's own game. No wonder short walks tall. Having played such beautiful games. You know when I was uh, a kid and this is a joke, but when I was a kid, I saw Grandmaster Nigel shot for the first time. My innocent brain wondered, why is the tall GM named Short? Okay, coming back to this game, I really loved some moves here like Queen H3, Knight D1, Bishop C1, Knight E3, Knight D5 idea, Rook E3, Rook Lift. And of course, the final blow, queen h7. It's so nice, so wonderful to make such a move on the board and finish off the game in such style. I hope you enjoyed this game. I really liked it very much. They say in life, if you love someone, you must express it in words. Just keeping in the mind, is not enough. Similarly, in YouTube videos, if you like some video, actually put a like to it, ex express it, and only then it will reach the other people. Let's spread the happiness of seeing a beautiful chess game. Let me know in the comment section below whether you enjoyed watching this game. Keep encouraging me. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.